Newness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust. I still find you well, my friends. It's been a journey from Monday to Friday. And today we want to come to the end of the book of Numbers chapter 14. It reads as follows, and we begin reading at verse 39. When Moses reported these words to all the Israelites, the people were overcome with grief. Verse 40, they got up early in the next morning and went up the ridge of the hill country, saying, Let's go to the place the Lord promised, for we were wrong. For the one, but Moses responded, Why are you going against the Lord's command? It won't succeed. 42, don't go, because the Lord is not among you and you will be defeated by your enemies. Skip to 44, but they dared to go up the ridge of the hill country, even though the ark of the Lord's covenant and Moses did not leave the camp. At verse 45, as we come to a conclusion, then the Amalekites and Canaanites, who lived in that part of the hill country, came down, attacked them, and routed them as far as Homer. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of learning. For these have been written so that we may consider and learn so that as we make decisions in our time and in our days, we may make the right decisions, decisions that will please heaven above. And above all, be with us as we go into this weekend. Bless those who are not well. Heal them. Make them rise up from their sick beds. And those who are already bereaved, how we pray, dear Lord, that you may be their comforter. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. My dear friends, just allow me to raise, as usual, five points. And our five points are basically going to be a concluding remark. We want to look at the topic decision making. Is it a factual, faith-based, or an emotional decision that you are making? As we look at this, I want us to go back and consider that there is um, a topic we covered under the minority report. I'll suggest that you just scroll back and check it out. We found Moses choosing 12 people. Of these 12, 10 came and gave a factual position. And they said, upon assessing the land, we have noticed that we cannot overcome the Canaanites. They outnumber us. They have more experience. The land they dwell in is good and almost impregnable. True as that was, it was a factual decision, not taking into account that the Lord has been with them. Based on a factual analysis, they came to the conclusion, we cannot beat these people on our own. It's impossible. And that was true. The passage that we've just considered is going to be testamentary to this. They then proceeded on their own and they were bitten. Why? Because they did it against a factual conclusion that they had drawn. Point number one, as you make decisions, consider this. Are they informed by research? Are they factual? Are they grounded on some principles? Point number two. The minority report then follows thereafter. So look at the specialist uh, devotional that we did. The minority report is the one that was given by Joshua and Caleb. What they were basically saying was, the Lord is with us. The Lord has taken away their protection. The Lord will give us this place. That was a report that was founded on faith. And what were they basically saying to their brothers and sisters? In as much as the factual analysis says the probability of success is slim or even none. With God on our side, all things are possible. Doesn't the book of Hebrews go on to say, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. These two gentlemen are appealing to a faith based decision, not negating the factual position. When we move on faith, we say we have done our analysis. We know where we stand. We know what our limitations are. We know what we do not have. But with God, all things are complete. With God, all things are possible. That is a faith-based decision. 
go back into the week. Check from Monday to Friday. Have you, have you been making factual decisions only? Have you gone as far as making even faith-based decisions? Better are you if you're making faith-based decisions because you acknowledge the presence of God. Now we come to the emotional decisions and we are at point number three. I want to split these into three other subcategories. At point number three A, notice this. God has just said to Moses, you are going to go to these people. These people who continue to question me at every turn. Those who have misled the people. The first ten, they are going to be struck and they were struck by a plague and died on the spot. As for those who went on to complain after having received this particular report and refused to trust in me, having been witnesses to the multiple um, signs and uh, miracles I performed before them, these are all going to drop dead in the wilderness. Forty years for forty days that they spent in Canaan, they are going to roam the wilderness of Sinai and they will all drop dead in the wilderness of Sinai and only their children who are below 20, who were not numbered, whom they claimed they were protecting, whom they claimed were going to be preyed upon. I am going to prove them wrong. I am going to take care of these children and make sure that all these teenagers make it into the promised land. Now notice this, as they go back, God has said this to Moses and says, tomorrow you're going to turn around and you're not going to enter the promised land. You have seen it, but you're heading back into the wilderness. Having said this, how do they then respond? They say tomorrow morning, we are going up and we are going into the land of Canaan. This brings us to point number three A. When we make reactionary decisions, chances are we are now being emotional. We are not making a faith-based decision and neither have we considered the facts. When we react, whenever we are being reactionary, we are most likely making emotional decisions. Have you had to react during the week? How many times have you found that you didn't quite think it through? You're basically making an emotional decision. Point 3B. Listen to this. Now, God has spoken to Moses. Moses then speaks to them and he says, what you're about to do is wrong. This is Moses' response at, at verse 41. He says, why are you going against the Lord's command? It won't succeed. Now they are no longer being advised by Joshua or Caleb. They are being advised by Moses. And he says, the Lord is not among you and you will be defeated by your enemies. When Moses is giving this counsel, notice that the children of Israel disregarded. When we do not want to listen to counsel, when counsel is being given and we want to be headstrong and do it our way nonetheless, guess what? Chances are high. You are making an emotional decision and it will cost you. Moses was not being prophetic. He was simply telling them, the Lord has commanded, you can't go against his command. When we go against a thus saith the Lord, chances are we are venturing into the emotional space. The last point I want us to look at, at point 3C, the Bible says, when they took off, here is what never took off with them. The ark of the Lord never went with them. Moses never went with them. He remained in the camp. That's at verse 44. Now, what does it mean for, 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 for the writer to stress that the ark of the covenant never went with them? Moses never went with them. It simply means the presence of the Lord never went with them. When the children of Israel rose as a camp, the ark of the covenant was the one that always led. It moved along with them. This is why the sons of um, Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, later on decided, if we are going to overcome, let's go and get the Ark of the Covenant and carry it into battle. Because they believed God's presence was in the Ark of the Covenant, but in spite of not having any sign whatsoever of approval from God, they still go on and do things that are basically reactionary, things that are contrary to cancer, things that have no factual or visible support or confirmation 
Now, as they go on to attack, this is what the Bible says. Now they got there. Verse 45, the Amalekites and Canaanites who lived in that part of the hill country, they did not fight the whole of the Canaanite territory, just a part of it. They came down, attacked them, and routed them as far as Homer. Notice this, they went to battle, but they did not even get to attack the Canaanites. The Canaanites are the ones who met them and attacked them. And they whipped, whipped them all the way back to Homer. What is the Bible saying unto us? When we make emotional decisions, we might not even attack our competitors. We may not even attack our enemies, but our enemies are going to attack us. They are going to victor over us. They are going to thrash us. Why? Because number one, we have reacted and not planned. We are simply reacting and not being proactive. Number two, we are are disregarding express counsel. Number three, we are overlooking the obvious lack of an approval. We are basically doing strange things that have never been done before until we meet again on Monday. May the good Lord help us to make factual and faith-based decisions, not emotional ones. Blessings and peace.